Hi, this is Scotty Elkon with Selig Film News here with Hunter Carson. Hunter, the Dallas Film, the Dallas International Film Festival is is honoring your father this year um, with a Star Award, um, and we, we were just talking about the impact your dad has not only had on on this festival but um, festivals here in the city. And can we start there with your dad's reach outside of filmmaking is maybe even as impactful or powerful as his films. The fact that he does go out of his way to, to help bring about a film festival, to help you know, bring his film to a festival, help bring others' films to the festival, to bring awareness to filmmakers, to be bold enough to shoot on an iPhone and, and his innovations and his ideas spark others. Can you start with that? What what did what was it about your dad that made him just open to everything? Because when I met him, it was so he wanted to know about me, mm. and I think that's kind of the heart of why he was such a special person. Was he cared more about maybe everyone else than even just what he was doing, even though he loved showing what he was doing? All of what you said is true, and yes, he, he never gave up. He, he he would he would track down any harebrained idea, you know. When you're writing a script, you, you you follow all paths. Was his idea, you know. You're you write on the kitchen floor, as somebody has said to me. You write when you're sleeping, you know. Um, he cared about everybody's ideas because everybody has a valid idea, and that was his attitude. You know, we're all artists, whether you're writing a song or painting a picture, making a short film or documentary. The idea is solid, you know, and that creativity, when you follow it, will lead you through the project itself. You know, I mean, his, his idea of making a film is to sit down and start at zero you know you don't start at well i know halfway through the shark's gonna eat the boat you know what i mean he's like no, no 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 don't worry about that just start at zero he wanted everybody to start with a blank canvas you know he wanted everybody to start with the with the page in in, in your face you know or or the camera on your back uh david holson's diary that 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 genre that genre busting film that he made with jim mcbride um, back in 1967 or 68, 67. Um, they really, honestly, they had like a camera and a microphone. I mean, it was, it was avant-garde. I mean, it was, it, they, they were, you know, they were making a movie to show that Cinema Verite was both legitimate and illegitimate at the same time. And I think that's been his stance ever since, you know. He brought artists to Dallas in in the sixties, which was which was beyond reason. You know, as you said, it, it was beyond reason to take cell phone cameras into Africa and, and shoot. I mean, it's beyond reason. It doesn't make any sense. And I kind of think that that's what artists are. They do stuff that doesn't make any sense. You know, they 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 turn the camera's eye on society and show society. You know, that's the whole point. So he brings these, he brings filmmakers to Dallas. He starts a film festival in the 60s. One of the very first film festivals in the United States to show films that were made in the United States. A lot of film festivals in that era were showing foreign films. And that's what a film festival was, was to show people, you know, that they were making movies in other parts of the world. Um, and so that's when he started this, this, this artist community. And it's been building and building and building ever since. And it, it's the family, my dad's family, the Carson family, and the Dallas Film Society family ha have, been, have been, you know, inter intermingling for over a decade, you know. It, it started with the Deep Ellum Film Festival, and then it was AFI, and then now it's the Dallas International Film Festival, you know. And Dallas International Film Festival is about to be 10 years old next year, you know? And, and there's gonna be 
There's going to be a, a good mix of the Carsons and the Dallas Film Society um, at, at Diff 15, at Diff 16, um, for sure. His whole point, and I think what you're getting at, his whole point was create something, stand by it, and then create something else. He, he never he never stopped. Um, he never stopped making movies for himself, and he never stopped mentoring and teaching other people that it's okay to make whatever movie you want to make. And I, I, think, I think that's one of the things that, that a lot of people need to hear is, is just make what you want to make. Because I think a lot of people... I've seen a lot of filmmakers change maybe even in the past 10 years. Um, I've directed a little bit. I've, I'm, I'm producing. It's what I, my passion is, is producing. And the advantage you get when you're a producer um, is you get to find and meet and see people that haven't necessarily found their voice yet. Mm. You know? And it's something, that my, it's something that, that my dad was really good at, was helping people find their voice. Something he was really good at was if you have an idea that doesn't make any sense, you know, you just go after it. He was really good at, 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 at letting people know that that's a good thing to do, you know. Um, it was special in that way. So, yeah, I think that's a good assessment, man. Thank you. Yeah, that um, works. I'm curious because he, he made you a part of it as well. He brought you on. And, sure. And, and, and I think we're all very familiar with Paris, Texas and that whole experience, not only for him as a writer but you know for you as a, as, a, as a young child actor that how that affected your life and, and how he continued to, to to bring you aboard and, and it's it's shaped you I think how how has him being so bold to do all these film projects affected you and your life well I'm trying to figure out in my head how to start this because it's a long story what you're asking his, his effect, of course, began with me in Paris, Texas. That's well established. You know, we were on set together. He would, he would do funny things like come in and, and have me read a scene with Harry Dean, and then we'd kind of work the scene out with, with Vim and, and, and what are you really saying? Then he'd run back and he'd, he'd actually... My dad used a typewriter, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then he'd go to retype the scene with the dialogue that Harry Dean and I were comfortable with. And then Harry Dean and I would go goof off, and then they'd roll the cameras, and we'd do our thing. Um, so that progressed until the point where I was dissatisfied with acting uh, and, and really wanted to do something else in the film industry. And he influenced me to take... Um, production assistant jobs in every department. Mm. And this only makes sense to filmmakers. He influenced me to start at the ground floor of each individual department. Because he said, if you, if you want to do something besides acting, you're going to have to learn how to do all the other stuff. Mm. You know, you have, to, you have to build the set with the set, set construction department. You have to be a camera PA. You have to do the craft service on this next movie. You have to be a production assistant on this next movie. You have to um, work uh, in the um, you know sound department and and be a, a boom operator for this this week long movie. Um, he influenced me and and basically the craft of filmmaking is a group effort. And I'm going to go back to what I was saying about it being family. You know, you make this little family and everybody has, has their job, you know, and, and that's, that's the beauty of it. And we're, and we're all led by the producers and the directors. Mm -hmm. And um, that sort of f essential family unit is what keeps our, our artist communities together. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that, you know, we're all working, we're all working to create, you know. Whereas a lot of other industries are working to make a building. You know, that's creative, you know. The artists are, are working to paint the building or take a picture of the building or do stop motion of the building as it's being built. You know what I mean? We see, we see artists see what's going on almost in 
like uh, like in an obscure way, we, we, we take a step back, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So in order for, for filmmakers to see everything that's going on on a set, you start out and you you know you do the bus boy, you do the bar back, you you know you pick up the trash. You know what I mean. You you start at the bottom, and that's the and and that's what his his real sentimentality was for filmmaking was like you got to start at the bottom. You got to know every bit and piece of of making a movie. It's super important. And his attitude towards creativity was that way too. You start with the blank page. You start writing. You know the first the first letter of your the first word of the the first letter of the first word of your script is the first thing you do, you know. That was just that was the way he wanted to do it. He was he was adamant about the creativity. Can we talk about? It was it, it was important that it's here in Dallas. I think um, with not only you you've brought up the history of the festival and, and your family's connection to it, but. You've seen the city change mm -hmm. over the last decades of years. Um, how has Dallas conformed to that artist community that your dad was one of the people that started? How has the city been impacted because your dad and, and those guys that came in the 60s decided we can do something here, we're not in LA, we're not in New York, even though he had those connections, to do it right here in the middle of Texas and the city's changed because of it. Is that crazy to look at it that way? I would, I would say that that's not. I would say that, well, I'd say everything's crazy. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, not, it's not a crazy way to look at it. Um, Dallas has, in, in, in a way, you're right, has always embraced artists. Uh, you know, you go back to guys like Blind Lemon, Blind Lemon Jefferson. You go back to guys like Blind Lemon Jefferson and Robert Johnson, yeah. who came here, and this is you know a hundred years ago, literally. They were they were creators. They were artists. You know, when 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 the Maverick filmmakers of the '60s and '70s started working in Texas, started working in 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 Marfa and and in Houston and in in San Antonio and in Austin these guys were making these films you know it it sort of made everybody take a step back and go okay this is part of this is part of who we are as Texans and yes i think Dallas absolutely changed in that way you know we used to have this great tunnel in Deep Ellum, and that's the gateway to Deep Ellum. And and artists had canvassed the tunnel basically in in um, you know street art. It was beautiful. There's still a lot of street art um, in Deep Ellum. And and I and I think something like a film festival in the late '60s in a town like Dallas, which was a town back then, sort of made people think that there was something going on. You know, the 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 TV show Dallas from the '80s, I think it was mostly shot in L.A. Um, it still turned a focal point on Dallas and s that there was a TV show called Dallas. Then, you know, you get, you get that kind of, you get that kind of placement, you know, you get that kind of grounding where you have filmmakers and you have painters and you have sculptors and you have artists of all kinds that are in a city like Dallas. Dallas transforms and you've got artist communities, you've got people that want to help that grow, mm. you know, I think Dallas really, uh, I think Dallas really grappled with commerce versus creativity for a while, and 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 I and I think they both can win, um, you know. The best the best part of the grounding of an artist community here in Dallas was that Dallas. The idea of Dallas changed. The idea that it was cowboy hats and cowboy boots changed because then you had artists wearing cowboy hats and cowboy boots. It wasn't just guys that were out in the oil fields doing that. It was everybody that was doing that. It was it was part. They were part of being Texan was being an artist. Part of being Texan was uh, being an oil rigger. Part of being Texan was being a cattleman. You know what I mean? The, these are all very real, tangible 
pieces of the mosaic of Texas and Dallas. Mm. And that's a lot of those a lot of those pieces started getting created with the 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 beginning of those film festivals with my dad's influence with a lot of other people's influence throughout the years here in town. You know, and I think it I I, I think it goes to show that the styles here are very progressive. The way that we look at opera, symphony, um, modern art, the way that we look at all these things here in Dallas, Texas is, is sort of unique and it is, is a, very much a standout amongst the rest of our local footprint. Mm. You know, we're, we're going to show Breathless at, at the film festival. Um, at the Texas Theater. At, which, harping back to your comment about Robert Johnson and those guys, built the same time frame. Mm -hmm. um, what does that mean to you, to be able to show this film at that historic place? I think it's important to show a historic film at a historic place. You know, I think that's a good, that's a good bit of news right there. It means that... See, I know those guys. I know, I know the guys that, that, have, that have renovated that. and turned that community in. And you know what? That's another thing. The, the entire, the whole Bishop Arts and, and the, the, that area in Oak Cliff has really, truly embraced the fact that because of inexpensive housing, you end up with a lot of artists and artisans. Mm. Um, and that artist community over there is very, very big and, ve and thrives really well. Um, those guys at Texas Theater, they're, they're artists. I mean, they, they run a theater, but they also make their own movies. Yeah. And, and they're great. Um, so look, you've got the dynamic of this classic American film, which is based on a classic French film, <laughs> in a classic location in Dallas. You know, an iconic location in Dallas. Everybody knows the Texas Theater that's from here, and most people that aren't from here know it anyway. Oh. So it means a lot to me. I'm, I'm really happy to do it. I'm really jazzed. Mm -hmm. uh, I really hope people show up. I think they will. Definitely. I think people will show up. Yeah. I think people will show up. And you know, the thing is, I, was, I, was, I remember being around. I was old enough to remember being around on that set. And, you know, I, I do want to talk a lot about, about kind of how that way that movie was, was made. Because it wasn't a big movie for that era. You know what I mean? It was just... It wasn't supposed to be a big movie. It turned out to be sort of Richard Gere's sort of calling card. You know what I mean? And, and Jim McBride's calling card. It wasn't didn't start as a big movie, but it certainly ended as one. And and I think I think it's very cool that 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 the people um, the people that made that film would be very proud to have it shown at Texas Theater. Yeah. You know, kind of final question, Hunter. Um, we've talked so much about your dad's legacy and the impact he's had. Um, can you just share with us something personal about your dad that sticks out to you? Something that, that you, you've shared a lot of photos, I know, on Facebook of your dad that I don't think a lot of people have seen or know mm -hmm. about. Can you share something more just aside of maybe him that we have no clue about? Something that he loved that we don't know about? Or, or just something, anything to really give us something just more of him? Because I think we, we beloved all that he's done, but I feel like maybe something would, would mean something more if, if we knew, well, he was an amazing guy all around. Well, my dad is an amazing guy all around. He, he worked, he worked very hard. Something that, something that you could describe very simply as a cowboy work ethic. Mm. And a lot of people imagine that he's a metropolitan character, because he is a metropolitan character. He actually was a really good football player in high school. And uh, he worked to he worked really hard in the lumber yard growing up. He actually worked very hard. There was a lumber yard um, in Irving, Texas, close to where he was, where he was, where he grew up. Um, and you know, he would 
he, he's such he a would, tiny he, guy. I can't think of him. But that he's thing. like he, I know he's like a, he's he was a really good football player, and he was incredibly strong as a young man. And he used to he used to cut wood and make two by fours and eight by sixes and things like that. That was like his first job, wow. working in a lumber mill. Mm-hmm. That's shocking. That's <laughs> Andy played lacrosse in college. Wow. He was an he's actually an athlete. <laughs> See he was like wow. a major student athlete. Yeah, and then it just like. You know, through through filmmaking and and uh, you know um, journalism, he he just he never he never really got back into into being a football player. Mm. He just he just kept going with the, with the creativity. Yeah, wow. my dad's an athlete. That, there, there's this, there's there's something that you'll never know. He's actually an athlete. Wow. <laughs> no, thank. You. I mean, that that's that's exactly what I was hoping for. Something we didn't know because I think we know so much about your yeah. dad. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much, Hunter, for doing this. And, you know, just personally, um, your dad was an incredible dude. And to get to know him just for the short amount of period I got to know him, it made a big difference on me. And I know it makes a, a big difference on the festival that we're getting to, to honor him. So thank you. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome, dude. Thank you.